Hi, I'm your host, Kelly Lamb. Newport Beach offers a beautiful climate all year round. And when we say active and fit, Newport Beach brings it to a whole new level. Get ready and stay tuned for a great episode. Hi everyone, I'm a business owner, a wellness coach, a yoga instructor, and the great thing is, I do all of this here in my hometown of Newport Beach. I'm going to show you Newport Beach from an active lifestyle. I'm Kelly Lamb, and this is Active Me. Today we are exploring Newport Beach from a hiking perspective. We are at one of my very favorite locations, Crystal Cove State Park, just right above El Morro Canyon. Crystal Cove State Park is easy to find, located off the Pacific Coast Highway between Corona Del Mar and Laguna Beach. There are a variety of hiking trails for all levels, including kids, and Crystal Cove is rich in history. High above Morro Canyon, visitors enjoy a panoramic view of Pacific Ocean, interior valleys, and the majestic mountain ranges in the distance. Crystal Cove State Park has over 17 miles of hiking trails and access to 2,400 undeveloped acres. Trails are open to hiking, biking, and equestrian use. There is a lot of wildlife here at Crystal Cove State Park, including ground squirrels, cotton-tailed rabbits, western fence lizards, California king snakes, quail, and deer. What's great about hiking El Moro is that not only you get beautiful outdoor scenery, but you get to see the nature, you get to bird watch. They have beautiful stations here throughout El Moro where you can rest, barbecue, or even just hang out for a little while. Whenever I hike, before I get started, I love to stretch. Super important to have nice loose hamstrings and calves. So here in our station, the rest stop, we're gonna go ahead and do a little hamstring stretch. Go ahead and just kick that left leg up, keep the foot flexed. Goal is to keep those hips forward, so nice and level to the front of the bench. And on exhale, just start to fold over. Hands can come to the thigh, knees, all the way down the shin, or even reach those toes, depending on how tight those hamstrings are. We're gonna do each side for a few seconds, maybe two times. And then another great thing, like I mentioned, to stretch out the calves. We can use these great wooden poles and go ahead and just kick your top of your foot up on the top of the pole. Again, hips level to that pole. And then just start to lean forward and you'll get that stretch in the back of the calf and the hamstring again. Again, a few times for a few seconds on each side. And now, something that I love to do when hiking. Hiking's wonderful because it's great cardio. You're outdoors, you're getting vitamin D, you're breathing in the fresh air. But I like to amp up my cardio a little bit more and add some strength as well. So anytime I stop at one of these stations that has a picnic bench or maybe just a regular bench, I like to do a few different exercises. One that is my favorite is some push-ups. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you up in push-ups. So it's a nice, safe way to do it. Let's start with a set of five. And if you're feeling up for it, you can always add on in five increments. Maybe Maybe go to 10, maybe go to 15. Break it down, whatever works for you. So setting up for a push-up against a bench, I like to have the, my hands a little wider than shoulder distance. Feet are hip distance. Make sure you have a nice traction on the dirt because it can slide pretty well. Go ahead and keep your head in line with your spine. Take an inhale here, exhale down, inhale, press back up. That's one. Take it to two, nice strong. Keep your core pulled in when you hit three. And if you wanna work a little harder, maybe lift one leg. That's four, and we'll switch to the other side. And five. So that's a great chest and upper shoulder and bicep work. Now, if you wanna work a little lower body, we could do some step ups. So you wanna face that, whatever picnic bench or bench that you're at, make sure you have a nice stable bench. This one's cement, super stable. Feet are gonna start hip distance. I like to have my hands on my hips. On an inhale here, on an exhale, go ahead and pop that right foot on the bench and rise on up. Woo! I can get a little, un a little unstable, so you wanna engage that core to try to keep as stable as possible. Left knee comes high, and then lower down. We're gonna do five on each side. Woo! This bench is nice and high, so it does get a little bit unstable. That's good, though, because, it, again, it, re it makes you engage your core. You can go as slow as possible, or speed it up. Let's start that other side. Left foot high, right knee high. Bring it back down. Woo! Be careful, there's lots of rocks, so I'm getting rocks in my shoes that are ending up on the bench. Last one here. 
core is engaged, head in line with spine. So the next round, we got lower body, we got some upper body, but let's get this back of the arms. All right, so what I like to do when starting tricep dips is sit, sit down first, bring those hands alongside the hips, and then have a nice sturdy grip on that bench. We're gonna walk the feet out. There's a few layers here. You can keep your knees bent right at tabletop. Exhale down, inhale, press up. If you wanna work a little harder, you can lengthen out the legs longer. Feet flex, toes high to the sky. Again, lower down, lift up. Just like in push-ups, if you wanna work even harder, one leg lifts. Then take the other leg. You choose your level and however many you wanna do. I like to start with five. Keep your elbow squeezed in nice and tight. You wanna get all the weight of the body in the back of those arms so you're engaging those triceps. And there's your tricep dips. Whenever hiking, one thing that I love to do is always stop at one of these stations that show a map so I can understand exactly what's happening. Any type of dangers or warnings like rattlesnakes, maybe there's poison oak certain times of the year, thing to be careful of. A number one is to know the distance of the hike that you wanna take and how long it's gonna take. Something else as you're gazing at the map and just getting an understanding for exactly where you're at, just to be safe, I always have my phone with me in case if anything were to happen and I take a picture of the map that way, if I'm on the, the hiking trail and something happens or I get lost, I've got the map right in my hand. Let's get going. I like to hike these trails a lot. And so I always keep a checklist with me so I don't forget something silly like sunscreen. So let's go through Kelly's tips and tricks. Through my checklist, my number one thing is to always hike with somebody. Today I have my camera crew here with me so I'm nice and safe. There's great meetup groups all around that love to hike or bring a friend, maybe even your mom or your dad. Make sure you have good hiking shoes. Hiking shoes are key. If you don't have hiking shoes, then bring a nice pair of tennis shoes that have a good tread. These trails can get kind of slick, the dirt and gravel can get loose, and you can slide easily. Dry fit clothing is another key point. Go ahead and leave your cotton stuff at home. Make sure your skin is protected. Sunscreen in the backpack, a hat is always nice. Anything to keep yourself protected from the sun. Water is a necessity when hiking. I always bring my water bottle with me. You could bring a camel pack, or another great way to stay hydrated when hiking is bringing some type of an electrolyte water, maybe even a coconut water. So you burn a lot of calories when you're hiking, so it's important to have some type of a meal replacement because you're gonna be burning so many calories, you wanna be able to pull energy back into your system. I always either travel with nuts, dried fruit, some type of a meal replacement bar that'll keep you nourished the entire time you're hiking. A cell phone is a must. You never know what's going to happen and you want to be safe just in case there's an emergency. So bring your cell phone in your backpack. A first aid kit for minor cuts and sprains. Maybe an ACE bandage case if you get some type of a sprained ankle or need to wrap up a wrist. Another thing that's really great is to have a whistle. God forbid something happen and you fall and you're unable to scream, you can blow on the whistle, which doesn't take too much breath. And in these canyons, that whistle is gonna echo for quite some time. So then someone will be able to find you. And last but not least, remember your photo ID and your medical card. We don't want anything to happen while you're on here, but it's always important to be safe when hiking. And if something were to happen, someone knows not only who you are, but they know your medical information. So these are Kelly's tips and tricks for hiking. Have a great time.
Crystal Cove is one of the parks in the California State Parks Association. They put a lot of money to make sure that the trails are well-groomed and they're properly marked. So throughout the 17 miles of trails here, you'll find maps exactly like these that will show you where you are and where you might want to go. It's important to stay loose and limber when hiking. I like to stop in between, stretch, maybe do some lunges, do a little thigh stretches, twist and turn the waist a little bit, just to keep limber so I can keep going through the hike. Crystal Cove State Park is one of my absolute favorite places to hike in Newport Beach. It's a pretty easy hiking trail and what a reward. Look at this view. If you're looking to get balanced, close to nature, maybe just escape for a bit, this is the place to definitely do it. Well, that's the end of our hike. I had a great time and I hope you did. I'm a little exhausted, but I feel fantastic. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Active Me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.